Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? It is about quarter till six on Saturday afternoon, early evening. And it's actually not cool enough for a jacket, but it's kind of windy, kind of breezy out here. And so I was sitting out here with just this t-shirt on and I was like, well, I don't know how long I'm gonna vlog for. I may make this a very short vlog and be like 20 minutes or it could end up being an hour. And so I don't wanna get cold while I'm sitting out here and it's starting to get colder because I'm in the shade now. And so I was like, I'm gonna wear my coat just in case it's a little bit colder. But I did just make a cup of coffee, um, made uh, the IHOP, what is it? The buttery syrup coffee or something like that. We're gonna talk about coffee in just a second because me talking about coffee and my vast knowledge of roast yesterday, dark roast, light roast, medium roast, all of that um, caused quite a stir in the comment section yesterday. I never know what I'm going to say that's going to get, I mean it didn't cause quite a stir, but I got a couple comments about my extense knowledge of roasts. And by extensive knowledge of roasts, I mean that I know absolutely nothing, obviously, about coffee roasts. But I do now, because I educated myself last night. So anyway, cheers. Uh, I just made it. It's very, very hot. Oh, it's so good. I love this. I love this roast so much. <laughs> I love this coffee so much. This is, like I said, this is the IHOP, the buttery syrup or syrupy butter, or I don't know what it's called, but I love that IHOP coffee so much. Okay, so let me tell you about my very exciting day so far. I slept in, I slept very, very deep last night. And um, I had crazy, I've been having crazy dreams the last couple nights. And um, now that I am like deep into The Walking Dead again, so I finished Fear of the Walking Dead and I'm back into The Walking Dead after years and years and years. Now that I'm into The Walking Dead and I'm thinking all the time about zombies and actually late last night I was thinking about <laughs> As I was falling asleep, I was like, I turned my basement into, not not if we just like had, you know, a nice basement down there, but if we turned it into like an apocalypse bunker, like what would we have down there? So if we could just go down there and seal ourselves away and like, what would we have to have stored like water and dog food and all this kind of, I was like thinking this as I was falling asleep last night. So of course I had all these apocalyptic dreams, which would only make sense, you know? It's so funny that I'm sitting up here in my coat and people are walking by in like t-shirts and shorts and stuff like that. It's very sunny still out on the street. You can see it's, it's like, here I'll show you. It's a beautiful day in Indianapolis today. I think it got up to be like, it was supposed to be like 78 or 80. I don't think it got up to be, is it like focusing yet? Hold on a second, here it comes. You can see it. It's very sunny and the birds are chirping and all that kind of stuff. It, um... It, I don't think it got up to be 78 or 80, but it was definitely like mid to upper, upper 70s today. It was very nice. And tomorrow it's supposed to be even nicer. In the next couple days, it's supposed to be like 70s. And then in the upper 60s for like the most of the week, I was actually talking to my neighbor across the street. She was out working in her yard. And I was talking to her earlier about moving the hostas because I don't know if you can see, but like the hostas are growing and so are the weeds, but the hostas are growing so fast here can see I was like which of these are hostas because this looks different than this and she's like no they're all different kinds of hostas so I have, so I have this and then over here in the corner I have that as well I have this and then I have that over there and then I have that and then on this side we have this and then all these weeds and this so what we decided that we were gonna do is we're gonna have one here two, three, and then one like right here, four, and then the fifth one up here, and then they're gonna be even on both sides. So that's what we're gonna do. She's not very happy with the fact, and then over here in this corner, she told me that these are hostas that we're gonna pick. These are the ones that we're gonna start and we're gonna move all the way down there. But she wasn't very happy with the fact that I want a very symmetrical walkway. <laughs> I was like, I wanna have like, well I thought I was gonna do four and four, but she said we have enough to do five and five and she thought that would look better. And I was like, okay, cause we're gonna carry them down further. And so I said, well I want them to be, I said, do you see how like the cement is laid on either side? I want it to be very like equal, like one here, one there, one here, one there. She's, she just looked at me and I go, what? And she goes, 
you don't want a fun garden, do you? <laughs> I said, well, I'm gonna have all kinds of fun flowers. And she was giving me a hard time. I was like, I'm gonna have all kinds of like really beautiful flowers and stuff like that on the front porch. But like going down the walkway, I just want the hostas and then really, really dark um, mulch. And she's like, well, what does Alex want? Does he want a fun garden? Or does he? And I go, Alex, if it was up to Alex, like he wants me to take all this stuff out and just put stones in there. He said, it'll just be easier. We don't have to deal with the mulch every year. We don't do all that kind of stuff. I said, no, but it, it won't be pretty because there won't be any greenery out there. And he was like, you're the one that has to see it because you sit out there. He was like, I don't really see it unless I'm pulling in. He was like, so you do what you want to do. I don't really care. He's more he's more into the backyard and the back patio because he goes out there and sits more. I don't really ever sit out there. <clears throat> I was telling, and so my other neighbor, she was out walking her dog, and she was talking to us, and I was telling, that was telling the story about Alex, and she was like, oh, kind of like our other neighbors did. So our other neighbors on my other side, they, in their backyard, um, they, like, dug up where all their flowers were and stuff around there, and they just put stones. I mean, it looks very, very nice, but we're talking about <clears throat> probably, like, half a foot wide all the way around their, like, patio. We're not talking about a full walkway of just stones. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, anyway, so I'm very excited about that. She told me it is time for us to move them. She's like, we have to move them. So, we were trying to figure out when. She's asked me, she goes, I know you guys go to brunch, but maybe tomorrow afternoon after you get back from brunch, we could do it. I said, okay. And then we were talking about, like, she's got a dental appointment on Monday. I've got a hair appointment, so Monday probably won't work. And then Tuesday, it's supposed to rain. So, we're either going to do tomorrow or Tuesday after it rains. Um, and just get started on this. And then after the, the, um, the hostas are moved, I am going to weed the rest of this. And then until like the middle of May, I am just going to keep on weeding this because it's going to keep on coming up. I'm going to keep on, she's like, you've got thistle and all kinds of stuff in here. So I'm going to keep on weeding it until like the middle of May. So I don't have to do like one huge job. And then around the middle of May is when I'm gonna get a bunch of the, cause by then like most of the weeds will have been up. Like I'm gonna try to like once every other week go in and just like tear out some of the weeds and spray it. Cause we've got a bunch of weed eater in there and stuff. And then, and the weed eater won't kill the hostas. And then, um, and then lay the, the black mulch over it. And by then I won't probably only have to do it like once every three to four weeks of like weed it and stuff like that. And that's just my plan for out here for the summer. Um, I kept on thinking about wanting to do bushes and stuff like that year after year, but I just, I don't think I'm going to. I think the host, she's like, the hostas are so beautiful. She's like, you have such beautiful hostas. She's like, if you split them, she's like, it, they won't look fantastic this year at the end. She's like, but by next year, she's like, they'll, they'll look great. And she's like, you'll be really happy that you did it. And once I read all that, the other thing I want to do is we have all this stonework down here. Alex likes it because all the stones are different. He really likes that look. I would like it to be like very like even. I'd almost like to have like maybe like like black stones all the way down. I thought brick for a while, but brick just doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't go with this neighborhood. So I was thinking like maybe black stones, but Alex really likes these stones because they're all just like big and different and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's his house too. So he can, I mean, even though he says, he's like, you do what you want to do out there. Um, and then I was asking her about moving the plants outside specifically for an Alicious. Um, cause I told my neighbor next door she was, cause she has a lot of indoor plants and I was telling her, I was like, oh, I kept the fern alive all summer long. Fernalicious is doing great. She's like, she is. I was like, yeah, she's like big and whatever. And so I asked my neighbor across the street, I said, do you think it's time to bring her out yet? And she goes, no, I'd wait a couple more weeks, which is what I told Alex the other day about that. So, so yeah, so I had that conversation today. I got up, slept in today. Oh my God, I slept so, I, I still took me a, not as long to fall asleep last night as it usually does because I was so tired when I finally went to sleep. But I still struggle falling asleep. My legs are... She and I were actually talking about this because um, she was saying that she has a lot of, like, restless legs and her legs cramp and stuff like that. And I was like, but you walk so much. And she's like, even with the walking and the running, she's like, my legs still cramp a lot. And she's young. She's 30. So, so we were talking about that. And I was like, yeah, people always tell me magnesium and I take it. And when I do take it, it doesn't, like, work unless I take it for a long period of time. And then it kind of, like works for a little bit and then it stops working. She's like, yeah, I've tried that too. It doesn't work for me. So we're, it's just like a neighbor kind of day today. We're just having all kinds of neighbor talks out in the yard. And, um, and then I filmed a drama video and then I turned around and filmed a, uh, well, there were like two fun things I wanted to show in a haul. So I filmed a haul video for my Peter Dustup channel and now I'm vlogging. Alex went to his friend's pop-up shop today and then his other friend was supposed to meet him there. Well, first he went and had like one of those IV infusion things. He loves those. Like, what are they called? The, hyd the hydration. You know, he gets those all regularly. He loves those. So he got one of those. I think that was at one. And then like right after that, he went to his friend's pop-up shop 
from her boutique, and then he was supposed to meet his friend there, and she, she met him there, but then her kids had some kind of sports game. I don't know what sport they're in, but anyway, so they were supposed to go to brunch afterwards, and she couldn't go to brunch, so they postponed it, and so she, it was just gonna be the two of them, but now, like, two of their other friends are going, and they're all going out to dinner tonight. So he just left about 20 minutes ago to go to that. He was like, do you care if I go out to dinner with them? I was like, no, not at all. Go, have fun. He was like, well, what are you going to do? And I said, well, I'm going to vlog, and then I'm going to upload my vlog, and then I'm going to try to finish my graphic novel that I'm reading, this Juliet one, that I'm actually going to give to her when I'm done, because we were talking about it today. Oh, and my neighbor across the street is so excited, because she told me, she said, I was like, they're still not done with it. She's like, no. She's like, they're going to come back next week. They're going to finish tonight. She's like, my husband's so excited because he gets to park in the garage tonight because they moved all their stuff out of the garage. And she's like, they're going to come back next week and finish it. So she's like, it's beautiful. She's like, they're just very precise with what they do. Um, so we were also talking about her yard and what to do with her yard because they put out this thing on our newsletter and said that they can't get the gas company or whoever, the electric company out here to come and fix it. And so we're just gonna have to fix our own yards. And she's like, no, I'm not, that's not fair. Like, they destroyed it, they can fix it. And she was like, what would you do if you were me? And I said, I'd call the maintenance company. We pay the maintenance company with our HOA fee. It's their responsibility to fix anything on the outside of our condos. Like the paint, the roof, anything. Like, that's their responsibility. She was like, I feel the same way. She, and I said, use my name if you want to. I said, call them up and say, my neighbors are saying that's an eyesore. Somebody, there's like a hole in it. There's like a huge hole, like two holes right next to each other. She's like, little Boo Radley could fall in it. She's like, somebody's kid could fall in it. She's like, it's dangerous to have it out there. And they, that's why they have all the orange around it. But they're not gonna come out here and fix it now. And so it's her responsibility to fix it. And she's like, it's not, I don't even know what to do with it. She's like, there's like literally two, two feet holes in my yard with all this stuff, plus all the grass is destroyed around it. There's, she's not happy about it. I was like, yeah, I called the maintenance company. She's like, you think they'll come out here and fix it? I said, they gave me a new tree when the lightning, when the lightning struck my tree, there's no reason why they shouldn't fix that. We have a new landscaping company, which I was having her look. I was like, do you think they even cut my yard? And they're really nice. The guys are really nice. But I don't know if they just came out. First of all, they said they were coming two days last week to really get an idea of what was going on. They only came for one day. And then I said, you can't even really tell with your yard and their yard because it goes together. I said, because it's under trees and all that mess over there with the orange stuff and whatever. I said, do you think that they cut my grass? And she was like, I don't think it looks like they cut your grass at all. I said, no, I don't think they cut my grass. So what were they doing out here for that whole day? This landscaping thing is going to be a huge issue this summer. People are not going to be happy about it. So that was today. Then I filmed this drama video, filmed the Peter Dust stuff video. Oh, Alex was asking me what I was going to do tonight. I'm going to finish the graphic novel. And then um, I'm caught up on all of my shows. So last night, how, what did Alex and I watch last night? I don't have my phone out here. It's uploading my drama video. What did I watch? What did we watch last night? Alex and I watched. We got caught up on. Oh, no, we didn't get caught up on anything. It was funny because Tanya called me while we were doing it. We were watching Shit's Creek. We watched like four episodes of Shit's Creek. It was so nice. I love that show so much. I forget how much of the, how much I love that show. So we were watching Shit's Creek and then Tanya called. And then after I got off the phone with Tanya, I went inside and I watched another episode with him and then I lay down for a little bit. We were so just like mellow last night. And um, then he came upstairs, and it was early when he came upstairs. It was like before 10, and I was like, are you going to bed? He was like, yeah, I'm going to bed, I'm tired. And so he went to bed, and then I got up a little bit after that, and I, um, I watched, I got caught up on all my shows. I watched The Valley last night, which is the Vanderpump Rules spinoff. Um, somebody asked me on the sh video yesterday, maybe, I think it was this channel, they said, am I watching Vanderpump Rules and do I like it? I really like Vanderpump Rules. I think it's good. Um, I think some people are trying too hard to make names for themselves, but I like the whole concept of the show. It's very much like Below Deck meets Vanderpump Rules. So I like it, except it takes place in a villa that Lisa Vanderpump Rules runs. Um, but we watched that earlier in the week. So I watched The Valley last night. It's okay. I just... I mean, I like it. it was, to be honest with you, I almost kind of, I like The Valley more than I like Vanderpump Rules. Vanderpump Rules, I'm so tired of the Ariana and Tom Sandoval storyline. I'm just, I'm like, 
the thing is, they started recording it like three weeks or three months after it happened. So, of course, this whole season is going to be about this. But it's like literally the whole season is about this. It's, I'm so tired of hearing about it. Um, so, I watched The Valley last night. It was pretty good. It's, it's okay. Um, and then I watched... I have some feelings about it, but I'm going to save it for my uh, TV channel. I don't have to call it my reality TV channel anymore. I just call it my TV channel because I'm covering all TV shows over there. I announced that yesterday. And then um, I watched Survivor. I'm so loving Survivor this season. It is so good. It is so good this season. Um, and it was like a double, like, a, what we call it that on Big Brother, a double elimination. But it was. It was like two people got kicked off. But it, it, it was tricky how it happened. So, um... I, but it's so good. I love it. I have my favorites. So if you're watching Survivor, Kenzie's my, one of my favorites. Hunter's one of my favorites. Um, is his name Tyrell? I really like him a lot. I don't like Venus. She actually is so arrogant that she took responsibility for blindsiding somebody and she didn't have anything to do with it because she has no clue what's going on with the game. The Liz girl is a floater. I don't like her. Um, I don't, it's not that I dislike these people. I just don't like them as, like, reality TV people. Um, who else do I like? I feel like there's somebody else that I really, really like. I like Q and Tiffany. Q, like, Tiffany and Kinsey are having an issue with Q, but I really like Q. Um, that's not his name, is it? Q's from RuPaul's Drag Race. What's his name? Why can't I think? I like him, though. The thing is, oh, this is what I was going to say. And then I watched uh, uh, Amazing Race. Amazing Race, I feel like through the years, like, the the obstacles, what are they called? The detours. I think, I feel like when I used to watch it back in the day, they were, like, so much scarier than they are now or so much harder than they are now. I feel like back in the day, they were, like, really, really difficult. And, like, now they're, like... They're difficult. Like, la like this week, like, for one of the things, they had to, like, climb up the side of this, like, wall. And if you're scared of heights, it would be scary, right? But, like, I think most people could. It's like a climb time. Like, you know, it, it wasn't that high. And the other thing was they had to put on this, like, thing, this drum thing, and they had to bang this drum and beg for money. I mean, back in the day, they were, like, really, really difficult things. I would never have gone on it back in the day because it was, like, you had to, like, bungee jump over, like, a cliff and stuff. I mean, it was things, like, terrifying things, right? And, um, but the thing about Amazing Race is, like, I was talking to my neighbor about it because he really likes the show. And so she watches Survivor and he watches Amazing Race. And so I talked to them both about it. But the thing about Amazing Race is that there's not really anybody on the show that I don't like. There never really is. There's not, like, anybody on the show. I mean, back in, and he was actually saying this. He was like, back in the day, there were, like, really unlikable teams. But not really anymore. Like, this season, I really like every team. It's funny because the son and the mother... I didn't like them at first. He, they were kind of like, he was kind of annoying to me as a super fan and whatever. Like, the super fans kind of get, get on my nerves sometimes. Especially when they act like they're super fans, but then they play the game so stupid. Like, the brother and sister that got kicked off first, like, they were super fans, but they had, like, they just played a dumb game. Like, that drives me crazy. Because as a super fan of some of these shows, I'm like, if I got on these shows, you know. You always think that, you know, though, when you're watching it. But um, the son and the mother, I really like. There's something about them that, well, first of all, my mom would never be driving in South America. She'd be terrified. She wouldn't, like, know how to drive and all this kind of stuff. But they were driving yesterday, and she was driving stick. And he's like, you're doing a great job and whatever. And, like, there's something about the relationship that kind of reminds me of my mom and I a little bit. But um, I really, really, like, I'm rooting for them now. I really like them. Um, but there's not, like, really a couple that I don't like. There's the Air Force pilots that are friends. I really like them a lot. Um, there's, like, a couple different couples. There's, like, a gay couple that's, like, number one every single time. And um, they're, what I like about them is you wouldn't think that they were going to win all of these, like, physical comps. And they are doing so fantastic. And they're having such a fun time with it, too. Like, they were, like, when they were doing the drum thing, they were, like, hilarious. And I like them. And then there's a lesbian couple that I really, really like. And then there's two friends that are firefighters. And I thought they were going to get kicked off yesterday. The people that, the, this week. The ones that got kicked off, like, we were talking about that today. The ones that got kicked off... Like, I really liked them. They were cousins, and I really liked them. There's not really anybody on the show. There's this older couple. 
every week when somebody gets kicked off, it just kind of breaks my heart. That amazing race, like that's the hardest part. But last or this week, last week an older, well, a couple my age got kicked off, and then. Um, but I mean older than like, you know, 20s. But Amazing Race is actually a lot of like, more like people that are like 35 to like 65. Um, my nose is itching me, oh my gosh. Um, and then there's like this older couple on there, and I, I I'm trying to think of what their names are. I think her name was Sharice, it's like, maybe Dwayne and Sharice, I don't know, but I really like them a lot. And the thing I love about them is, they're really not like super fast, like they don't run, like they're pretty slow <laughs> and stuff like that, and they do so well. And they're just having so much fun together, and um, I love everybody on The Amazing Race. There's not really anybody that I don't like, you know? I think until you get down to like the last four or five, it's like you don't really know like who you're like favorite, like who you're really rooting for anyway. But I watched that, and then I went in and I started watching The Walking Dead. I finished the first episode of season seven. I started watching the second episode. The second episode's all about Carol, and then and I was like, I don't remember what happened, and then I remember what my plan had been before I started watching The Walking Dead again because it's been so many years since I've watched it. I kind of remember, because it's when she meets Ezekiel and he's running the kingdom and stuff like that. I was like, I remembered him and I remembered the the tiger and how Morgan was like, so I remembered all that. But like, I didn't remember like where Carol was before that and how they rescued her. And so I go in and I start reading these recaps of like what happened in season six. And then I was like, oh, well, what you were going to do, your plan was, is that I was going to actually sit out here and I was going to get on YouTube and like just find some recap channel and I was going to like watch like recap of season one, recap of season two, recap of season three, recap of season four, five, and six, right? Until I got up to seven and I would know what had happened. And, um, cause like when stuff, when they talk about people, like I remember them, but I don't remember them really, really well, you know? And so, um, like, I was reading, and it was talking about how they were going to get Maggie medical supplies because she's pregnant. I was like, oh, that's why they got caught at the very end of season six. And I totally remembered it. But I didn't remember it until I read it, you know? So I was like, I need to go back in there and do... Because I don't want to start over with episode one. I just don't. Like, I watched it in real time. I do remember those first couple seasons very, very well. So I don't want to watch it from episode one over. Um, and I feel like I watched season six twice. I know it sounds crazy, but I feel like I did. So I'm gonna go in there and watch those like recaps of that. And then I'm now on, I'm halfway through episode three or episode four. I can't remember. And the farthest I got was season seven, episode four. So I'm about where I left off before. And then I was like, okay, I need to go to bed. So I went to bed and that was last night. It's just been a really nice, calm, relaxing evening. This group that Alex is with, um, I mean, they're all like married, two of them have kids, so they won't be probably home, he probably won't be home like super, super late, but they'll probably be there for a couple hours. Um, he'll probably be there till like 8.30 or 9 or something. These are like girls he's been friends with for like ever. Used to, they all used to work together, they've been friends for like 20 years. Maybe not that long, 15 years. About the time that we started dating was when he met them. But anyway, so I'll have fun tonight. And I'm gonna just watch shows. I'll probably take a nap later, finish my graphic novel. I wanna take a walk because it's so beautiful today. And listen to some of my audio book. Once I finish that Juliet one, I'm gonna like focus on finishing Fangirl. Okay, so let's talk about the rest of the coffee. <laughs> Cause yesterday I went into this whole thing and I was talking about well, I like a medium, like a medium to dark roast. I don't really like a light roast and all this kind of stuff. And I got these comments on there, and people were like, um, like Peter talking about roast is cracking me up. Like, oh, uh, somebody said something like, it cracks me up so much that Peter like roast has nothing to do with taste. And somebody commented on that and said, oh, that made me giggle too. And I'm like, what don't I know about roast? Well, I'll tell you what was very obvious to me reading the comments, especially after I went and did a little bit of research, is that. Number one, I have no clue what the word roast means. When I, I mean, I do now because I read several articles about it last night, but I have no clue, or I didn't before then, what the word roast meant. I don't know. I think I was using the word roast to describe, like, darkness or lightness when that has little, literally nothing to do with it. Like, 
I don't really know how to explain it. It also has nothing to do with the caffeine. And there, somebody put that on there, and I was like, oh, I didn't even know that. And I read that when I was reading the articles that, like, actually a lighter roast has more caffeine than a darker roast. I think I was talking about more of, like, a stronger... I don't know. I don't know the words. I, I was using the wrong words to describe whatever I was describing. I went in, and I'll be honest with you, I read like three articles about roast and defining like light roast, medium roast, whatever. I was right about this because when it talks about darker roast, like when it identifies darker roast, it talks about it like an espresso being like a darker roast. So that's kind of what I meant in there. Um, but it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with caffeine or whatever. But somebody put in there, and what I was, what I was going to say was the number one thing that we need to learn from this is that Peter had no idea what the word roast meant, had no business using that word whatsoever. But the second thing we need to know is that for some of y'all that out there that thought it was real cute to call me out on it y'all didn't know much about roast either <laughs> i'm just gonna talk especially the person and i'm hey listen this is all just fun and games okay but the person that said something about because you're very nice and they've left lots of comments on my videos so this is just a little shade throwing back at them because i didn't know shit about roast i when, when i got all those comments i was like am i totally misunderstanding what like roast means and stuff like that hey and um and so I was like, I have no clue. I like reading these articles and I'm like, roasting is like whatever they do to the bean or whatever. I have like, listen, I was completely, I have no idea. I, I still, to be honest with you, I read like three articles. I'm still very confused about it. So I have a feeling that some of the people that were commenting on it are people that like, are like, know a lot about coffee or like are baristas or something like that. But I can to be honest with you, like, I don't know why I was using those. I mean, I was using those words because like when I, I'll go through like a coffee place and I'll be like, you know, like, okay, this is a dark roast. So it has like more of like a stronger, it's more of a stronger coffee versus like a blonde roast, which is almost kind of like, seems more of like a tea to me or something like that, which is what I've always thought, right? Maybe I'm completely wrong. I feel like, okay, so my ex is a hairstylist and I can remember one time and he would color my hair and I can remember one time saying to him, I want my hair like really a warm brown, right? And so he was like, okay, are you sure? And I was like, yeah, like I want like a really warm chocolatey brown. And I was thinking like Angelina Jolie kind of thing, right? Well, he did my hair and he's a fantastic colorist. Like he does un unbelievable color. Like Tanya and my other friends, like he would do their hair and they'd be like, I've never had anybody ever. I mean, he's like an artist when it comes to color. I've never had anybody do my color like this before. So I'll never forget this because he did my hair and I looked in the mirror and it was like, like almost kind of like a burgundy brown. And I was like, this is like red. I cannot go out with this. And he was like, you wanted a warm chocolatey brown. And I was like, yeah, warm, like chestnut. And he's like, you need to be very careful of the words you're using because warm to a hairstylist means something completely different to, to somebody else. And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, well, warm indicates like reddish tones to like a hairstylist. You need to be very specific, like show a picture. You said warm and you said chocolate. Like those are terms to me that have reddish tones to them. You wanted a reddish tone in it. I was like, no, not at all. Like you've got to get this off my hair. I remember we went through this whole ordeal of having to like strip my hair and all this kind of stuff. And he was like, that term warm to a hairstylist typically means like reddish tones. He was like, I'm just telling you that right now. If you ever use that, whatever. I was like, no, it doesn't. I've used that before. And he's like, yeah, it does. And so I think like a lot is like with the words. And so I'm saying they're using roast when I don't even know which word. I, I don't know what I was trying to say about I thought I, I knew what I was talking about with roast, but I, what I realized was I knew nothing. But some of y'all didn't know e anything either as you were shading me in the comments talking about <laughs> Peter. Taste ha or roast has absolutely nothing to do with taste. That's incorrect because I read the articles last night. <laughs> you need to read the articles too because I read and I put, does roast have anything to do with taste? And there are all these articles are like, yes, roast has to do with taste, the different shades between this and this. So yes, roast does have to do with taste. I didn't know that until I read the articles. <laughs> I didn't know anything about roast. I'm like reading these articles. First of all, I feel like do you ever, like, you read stuff, and, like, as you're reading it, you're like, oh, okay. But you, like, don't understand anything. Like, this whole roasting of the coffee bean and what, like, the difference is. Like, even when it would list, like, examples of, this is an example of, like, a light roast. Like, cinnamon was an example of a light roast. That means, like, nothing to me. That, like, is saying to me, like, a box equals yellow. Like, I don't get that. Like, it doesn't make, it's like speaking a foreign language to me. Like, I was reading these articles and I was like, so I was using the word roast as an adjective 
that didn't have the meaning that I don't even know what I was trying, what meaning I was trying to apply to it, but I better just get rid of the word roast from my, my vocabulary because I have no clue what roast means. I do now after reading the articles, kind of, but I still don't really understand it. It's the process, I guess, of making the coffee bean or whatever. I guess I'm still kind of, hey, how are you? I'm still very confused by it. So it is what it is, but I'm going to read some more articles about roast. I'm going to like talk to somebody that I know that really knows a lot about coffee and, um, and ask them, you know, people from time to time will ask me like what happened to the guys that worked at the Starbucks of the street that I used to do the videos with and talk when I went through that. Nobody that the camera stopped. The last time I went to that Starbucks was, I don't know, a while ago, Caroline and I went through there and nobody that used to work in there when I went through there works there at all. Like not one person, not nobody that there were, there was like, I don't want to say their names, but the, the girl and then the guy and then his fiance and then the tall guy with the ponytail, like none of them work in there anymore. I don't know where they work. I don't like, I'm friends with one of them on Facebook. Um, so I could probably look him up, but like people ask me all the time, they're like, do you ever talk to this? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know where they are. I never go there anymore, you know? So, um, and they stopped working there like long before I stopped, um, like going through there regularly. Most of them did. The only one that really still worked there was the girl and I would see her from time to time. And then I think the last time that I saw her, God, that was months ago, probably like six months ago. She told me she was quitting. She said, I'm not, I'm, cause she worked there and she worked somewhere else. And she's like, I'm not going to work here anymore. So I don't know who I'm going to ask to reach out to about, uh, roast, but <laughs> I know now I'm going to get all these comments about it. And Peter's dissing his audience about not knowing about, listen, y'all were laughing at me. You were laughing at what cracked me up was that people were laughing about me not knowing about roast and your comments didn't make no sense either so what we obviously need is we need to take a class a joint class on coffee roast 101 <laughs> is what we need but um yeah i don't know i always kind of thought like a light roast was like a light and airy coffee <laughs> that almost is like a tea like light looking like a tea that's a light roast a dark roast is like really really dark like an espresso and what i realize is that those are not the appropriate words to use and that has nothing to do with it whatsoever and i don't know what the <laughs> f i'm talking about <laughs> so we're gonna instead of talking about coffee from now on roast we're gonna talk about different we're gonna use different words okay so the color of this coffee see this is a little bit lighter the ihop it's the <laughs> i almost said roast no it's lighter it's like i mean it's not as like it's steep i guess like the steeping of it isn't as like you know dark as like an espresso would be like dark dark you know I'm into like the darker right now. Although, and I said, and this is what was so funny is I said something, I think this is where like people were like, Peter, like a light roast has medium coffee. Cause I said something about like, an, like a light roast would be like a good afternoon coffee. I was like really talking like I was an expert about something, wasn't I? But what I meant was like, Okay, like in the morning when I get up, like I want like a really strong cup of coffee, right? That's that's a good description right there. I want a strong cup of coffee that's going to be like, I'm awake, right? And sometimes late at night, like I really like that too, what I'm saying out here. But like in the middle of the afternoon, I kind of like just like a light cup of coffee. You know, not necessarily about the caffeine level or if it's going to keep me up or whatever, because it really doesn't matter, to be honest with you, in the caffeine level. But maybe just not as such a strong cup of coffee. Like in the morning and late at night, I like, like a strong cup of coffee. You know, like after dinner, like like an espresso, a strong cup of coffee. Something that's like, ooh, like, oh, I can taste it. Bitter, bitter. There's a term for you. But in the afternoon, I like something that's not as strong, not as bitter, you know? I like a lighter roast. <laughs> I can never use that word again. Oh my God, I don't even know what I'm talking about. I really don't. I have no clue what I'm talking about when it comes to roast, but I thought that was so funny. So yeah, so, um, and I keep on saying I'm gonna take a day off, like, Last night when I was watching TV, I was so convinced I was taking today and tomorrow off. I was like, I'm not filming any videos this weekend. I'm just not. I'm going to take the whole weekend off. And then I was talking to her today. I thought, well, we could work on the garden today. Did they put their cars in the garage? No. Oh, my God. I thought, I think the guy left. I wonder why he hasn't put his car in the garage yet. Um, I thought, well, maybe we could work on this today. But then the time kind of got, like, away from us. And she was, like, over there working in her garden and stuff like that. So she still got her Easter bunnies up. She needs to take those Easter bunnies down. I'm going to tell her a thing or two. So, um, and then I was like, it's such a great day to read. I, ha 
haven't, like, I have that graphic novel going and two short story books, but I really want to read that Talbot Straight that I talked about on my booktube channel. So I may start that tonight, just read, like, a, a chapter of it and see what I think. Yeah. But, yeah, last night I was like, you couldn't convince me I wasn't taking today and tomorrow off. And then, like, Alex was gone most of the day. And then I filmed the drama video. Well, so he came home and he was like, do you want anything? He was getting Chipotle on the way. He was like, do you want anything from Chipotle? And I was like, no, you know I'm trying to eat healthy this week. He's like, no, I know, but I didn't want to not ask and then come home. And I was like, no, I appreciate it. And I was like, no, I'm good. So he got Chipotle on the way home from the thing. And then um, he, uh, but he didn't get like a lot because he was going to dinner tonight. So we got Chipotle on the way home just for like, like late lunch. And then he was eating that. That was when I was filming my drama video. And then I went inside and I talked to him for a little bit. And then he, he like relaxed for just a little bit and then like got ready and went and met up with them. So it could be like a real short thing tonight. They might be home before. And I don't really, to be honest with you, care because I want to watch tonight. I want to watch another episode or two of The Walking Dead. Oh, we've got RuPaul's Drag Race, but we'll probably watch that tomorrow night. Um, I've got an episode or two. I want to watch an episode or two. I could binge watch 18 episodes, to be honest with you, The Walking Dead tonight. I'm so into it. But I also want to watch Welcome Home, Roxy Carmichael, because that's the movie for the week for Peter's movie night. If you are following on Peter Does Stuff channel, it would really mean a lot to me if you guys would follow that, because I'm having so much fun with it. I'm picking, So I'm picking out a movie every week. That is a movie that sometime in my youth, whether it was when I was young or in high school or like before I got sober, college or whatever. Well, at first, these were the movies I'm going to pick. Later down the road, I might pick something else. Tia. <laughs> Tia, girl, I love you so much. You know I do, okay? I love Tia so much. And she's been so supportive and followed me for forever and DMs me and stuff like that. I know you love the movie Damsel, <laughs> okay? You, she has left this comment. It cracks me up. She has left this comment. She's like DM'd it to me and she's like left it on like three videos. And she's like DM's, and I'm like, okay, I've said on the Peter Does Stuff channel that it's movies like from my childhood. Damsel literally just came out. I actually talked about it on this channel because I think it's um, got Angela Bassett in it because I saw the interview at the Sherry Shepard thing. And I do want to see it. I do want to see Damsel. And I know you think it's great, so I will watch it for you. <laughs> Tia, I love Tia. She cracks me up. Tia is probably, I mean, she's somebody that watches, like, all of my channels and comments on them, and I so appreciate that. I really do. But I said over there, I was like, um, these are just movies, like, front that I've already watched that I loved when I was growing up that, like, impacted me in some way. And I'm, like, reading through the comments, and I had already, like, gotten the DM and whatever, and she says on the vlog, and Tia goes, Damsel's a really good movie. <laughs> It almost was kind of like Mel with the Endless Night thing. And I was like, Tia, I am going to get you, girl. I'm going to get you. So I'm going to watch Damsel for Tia because she really wants, I can tell she really wants me to watch it. So I'm going to watch Damsel for Tia. Not maybe tonight. That's actually something that my husband would really want to watch. He loves those kind of movies. So he and I will probably watch that in the next couple days. And then um, tonight I'm going to watch Welcome Home, Roxy Carmichael free on TV. I actually... So, I really want to watch the movie Shag. Somebody recommended it to me, and I said it on... I don't know if I said it over here or if I said it over there, but Shag was one of my favorite movies in high school. There were two movies that we, like, lo like my group of friends, my girlfriends and I loved, like, our junior and senior year. Maybe just our senior year. Shag was one of them. Maybe Shag was after high school. I feel like it wasn't, though, because I loved that movie Shag so much. Well, Shag's not on Tubi. So, I may include Shag and find other places to watch it, but my all-time favorite, well, our group, our all-time favorite movie in high school, it's so bad, you guys. It's like, I don't want to tell you what it is because I'm going to do it on the Peter Dust Stuff channel one of these times. I'll probably do it around graduation because it's a graduation movie, but... It was like how we always, it's, it, we, it's how we saw our group. It's, the movie is so bad, you guys. I mean, it, most of these movies are B, like B-list movies. But this movie is so bad. Well, I looked it up on Tubi. It's not on Tubi. I looked it up. I'm like, and so it said it was on Amazon Prime. I looked it on Amazon Prime. To buy, it's on Amazon to buy the DVD <laughs> or the VCR or whatever. That's not on Amazon Prime. So I'm like, where can you watch this movie? The only place you can watch it is on YouTube. Somebody has downloaded the whole movie. You can watch it on YouTube. It's not great quality, but you can watch it. And I'm like, oh, I'm picking this movie. It's for free. It's on YouTube. Everybody can watch it. And so we're going to watch this movie in that group. But I have, I have probably, well, I have the whole list made out all through the whole year of like every, like Friday, I have the date and like a, like a little, you know, the little check mark thing next to it. 
Um, and then I'm just gonna like program in the movies as I pick them. I have like a couple movies that I definitely want to pick for like the next couple weeks. Like I knew today, I knew this week was gonna be Welcome Home, Roxy Carmichael. After this, I don't really know what order I'm gonna pick them in. I just don't want to pick the same kind of movies every single time. So I think next week I know what I'm gonna pick because it's kind of a good. I'm like ready for summer. It's kind of like a it's a, a very sad kind of endearing movie, but I think it's a good like welcome to summer movie. So I think I'm gonna pick that for next week. And then this movie that I was talking about, my high school fun uh, like all of our friends like that movie in high school. I think I'm gonna pick that for like closer to graduation, like high school and college graduation, because it's like a graduation movie. And then but I've got like twenty some movies like on this list, maybe more than that, of all these movies. But a couple of them are scary movies, so I want to save those for October, um, for around Halloween. And a couple of them, I think, are really good movies to watch, like, in the summer. So I've got to go through the whole list of Tubi and see what movies are on there. I've just kind of gone through some of them. And, like, when something comes up that I'm like, oh, I love that movie, like, I pick it, I pick it and I put it on my list. That's how I've been picking, like, the movies. It's not like I, I think of a movie and then I look at I've gone through the movies and been like, oh my God, like that movie meant so much to me, or I love that, or I watch that with my mom, or I watch that with my high school friends, whatever. That's kind of how I pick it. Um, so yeah, so there's a couple movies. I think there's a couple movies on there that will really surprise people. There's a couple movies on there I've never talked about before. And there's actually a couple movies on there that like, well, Welcome Home, Roxy Carmichael. I don't know that I've ever seen it more than once. I think I only saw it one time. Um... So yeah, and then, so I'm excited to, uh, I didn't realize, I thought it came out when I was in high school. When I did the video yesterday, I realized it came out in October of 1990, which means I would have been a freshman in college, which would have made sense because I was in this creative writing class and I can remember writing this short story based lightly on kind of that idea of somebody returning home. But in, in my short story, it was a mother returning home. They knew it was her mother. And Welcome Home, Roxy Carmichael, she thinks this this actress that's coming home, this famous actress, is her biological mother. But in my short story, that was not the case. They knew it was their mother um, that was coming home. And she wasn't a celebrity. She was a, can we say stripper anymore? Do we say dancer? But anyway. And uh, I think I may have read that story on one of my videos at some point. It was called Lipstick Kids. I actually took this screenwriting class and I thought like it was so hard. Screenwriting is hard, it's not easy. And I can remember like we had to turn like either original work or some, something else and I turned that story into a screenwriting class. And it was like one of my only like shiny moments ever in school and he like picked it out and like read like my opening scene of like, it was like, the main character's name was Ruby and she was obsessed with the color red because her mother had left this lipstick behind and her sister wouldn't talk. She'd only talk to the lipstick, which is why it's called Lipstick Kids, because her mother left this tube of red lipstick behind. And so she's having this dream at the beginning of it. She's going through all these dresses, like in this dressing room, and there's like, and she can't get out of these dresses, and there's like taffeta and velvet and all this kind of stuff. And I remember he like read the opening scene. It was like one of my only shiny moments in all of my years of school, period, in the story. <laughs> that I ever got a little positive attention for something. Actually, graduate school, I did really well in graduate school, but I mean, in graduate school, you're not like, people are like, you know, gold star, Peter, for doing so well, you know what I mean? I think by then I had really learned how I learned educationally that I listen. Like if I, if I show up and I listen to a lecture, like I retain that information. It's like, you know, if I read a book, like I remember a lot, or if I, you know, whatever, like watch a movie, like I can remember things and whatever, if I listen, like that's why Audible is so much more powerful for me than reading a book. I can sometimes when I'm reading a book, I think a lot of it has to do with attention issues as well and stuff like that. But if I'm reading a book, I can sometimes read the same paragraph. I notice this at night, even when I'm doing like my nighttime meditations and stuff. I can sometimes read the same sentence or the same paragraph like 20 times. But if I'm listening to an audiobook. Like, it's funny, like, Mel and I will talk about, like, a true crime book, right, that we, like, read, like, before we go into the live stream or whatever. By the way, we set the live stream for the 20, Sunday the 28th at 4 p.m., and it'll be on the Facebook group. Um, but 
Like, sometimes we'll be talking about a book, and she'll say something, and I'll say, they talked about it in the book. I listen, like, she listens, like, if she listens to an audiobook, she reads physical copy books as well. But if she listens to an audiobook, she listens to it at one time speed. I minimum listen to it at two times speed, and most of the time listen to it at two times five to 2.7. So I'm listening to a book really fast, and you would think, like, I would miss so much stuff, but I don't. Like, sometimes I rewind it, like, if I miss something. But I retain so much information listening to it. It like amazes people. They'll be like, you like listen to that book in like two days and you remember everything like six months from now. How is that? I'm like, I don't know. Like I just do. Like I retain. I, I think it's because I audibly learn. I really do. I, I know that they're doing educationally a lot of things differently today. But I think down the road they will really be dividing people on how they learn. Like do you remember like in school when... You would have to write the paper and you'd have to do it on the note cards and you'd have to write down your like, you know, hypothesis, statement, conclusion and all that kind of stuff. Then you have to do all the note cards like that never made any sense to me like that. never. How to take notes in class and read books and take none of that ever made any sense to me. But if I sit in a class or if I sit in a seminar or a conference or whatever and I just listen to somebody like I retain information like that. Like I can I can remember most of what I said or what was said. Um. But if I'm reading something or I'm like taking notes, well, I'm, I, I like, it's like I forget it like immediately. And I think that down the road, you know, I think there are people that learn by doing things. Um, I think this is gonna sound crazy, but I am definitely kind of that person. Like, if I do something once, like if you show me how to do it once and I do it, like I can do it forever. Um, yeah, and I'm definitely like an audible person. Caroline's the same way, like with words with songs. She words, learns words of songs very, very quickly. I mean, not to say that I have like this perfect memory that I remember everything, because that's just not the case. But most of the time, like I, I can remember, conceptually I can remember like most of, you know, what is said and whatever. So yeah, that's that. a beautiful night. I keep on looking over here to look at my phone and see what the weather is. I think tomorrow it's supposed to be 70 or 8 or 80. It's supposed to be, well, today was full sunshine. Tomorrow it's supposed to be cloudy, and then Monday and Tuesday it's supposed to be cloudy, and Tuesday it's supposed to rain, but it's still supposed to be warm. I still haven't really moved out here yet to watch shows. I don't know why. I kind of just really enjoy sitting in my chair, if you want to know the truth. I do. Well, all right, you guys, I'm gonna get off here and see if my video is uploaded yet and um, get my uh, graphic novel out and, and try to get it done this weekend. I think I have like the last third of it, last third or fourth left of it. It's really good. Julie, I, I'll tell you, well, I talked about it on my, my, uh, my booktube channel, Juliet something. I really like it. Anyway, I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing Saturday. And if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. And um, remember these three very important things. One, you can start your day over whenever you want. Two, or your week or weekend if you need to. Two, practice random acts of kindness, but shh, don't tell anyone. Just do it because it's the right thing to do. It's a nice thing to do. Put some positivity and good energy out there in the world. And three, most importantly, make sure that you reach out to somebody and let them know how much they mean to you. Like I always say, you might be putting a smile on their face. You might be changing somebody's day for the better. You might be making them happier. You might be giving them hope. You don't know. Hope is a powerful thing. Also, be kinder to one another. Love one another a little bit more. Most importantly, be kinder to yourself because, because you'll be kinder to others. And love yourself more because you will love others more as well. And for anybody that's going through a tough time right now, I've gotten so many comments and DMs from people who have have sick kids. I know Tia, your kids have been sick lately and, and other people who've had spouses and kids that are sick or you guys are just going through really tough times. I've had a couple of people reach out to me about breakups that they're going through. Whatever you guys are going through right now, I'm sending you lots of positivity, a lot of positive vibes, prayers. I believe in prayers. You don't have to. And um, things will get better, okay? The sun will shine again. And um, let's... Uh, put one foot in front of the other and I'm sorry that you guys are going through a tough time right now and um, I hope things get better for you soon and I hope that you start feeling better soon and I love you guys so much thank you for listening and I'll see you tomorrow bye love ya